So today we're going to be doing something a little different, and we're making chili. Um, this recipe originally came from this pretty awesome book. Uh, it's the book I bought when I decided uh, I was going to start eating meat again, and I've made probably maybe 10 recipes out of it, and they've all been fabulous. So uh, thanks, Bruce, for a good book. Um, the recipe originally came from that book. I kind of have modified it kind of a lot, and also recently had to make it a little bit smaller because... Ooh, tripping over things. That's my kitchen. That's my whole kitchen. So, um, it's a chili recipe, and it's also a uh, sort of small recipe. Um, it can easily be doubled, and I think that would probably feed, like, easy six people, probably eight pretty good, because I can usually get about six servings out of this. So, um, I guess the most important part of any chili, other than that delicious hunk of meat over there, uh, is the chilies. And right here I've got three. These are ancho chilies. They're dried. Um, yeah, it's uh, kind of hard to find up here, but you can usually find them in like a, a larger grocery store. Kroger's usually got them. I actually had to go on an epic quest for these because the ones at our Fred Meyer are not gluten-free, so I can't eat them. So I guess when you're looking for buying dried chilies, the one thing I can say is they should be like a nice sort of pliable, totally dried out leather. Like you wouldn't want leather to be this, but this is kind of perfect for it. Focus on the chili phone. Come on. Come on. I know you can do it. It's just focusing on the wine over there. It's like my phone is a crazy... There we go. On the chilies. So it's it's kind of nice and soft. It's not soft, soft, but it's pliable. And it smells like a chili. It smells good. So then I've got... Skipping over here. I'm pretty sure this is what those things are before they get dried. This is a poblano. It's just a big honking green chili. Delicious. And then I've also got over here, this is dried chipotle chili powder. It is just from chipotle chilies. Let's see if I can open this up with my hand, I doubt it. Ooh, yeah. Get a better look. Looks like chili powder, but it's uh, it's literally just a chili. If you can't find this, and you might not be able to find this because I was actually looking for paprika when I found this. They were out of paprika, and I'm so glad because this stuff is amazing. It smells wonderful. It smells a little bit smoky because I guess a chipotle is a smoked jalapeno or something. So yeah, um, if you can't find that, and you can find a chipotle that look about like that size, they look dried like these. That's the same stuff, that's just been ground. Um, if you can only find the dried chipotles, we're going to give them the same treatment that you would give these when we get to the recipe. And I'm actually supposed to have a jalapeno. There's supposed to be, depending on how you look at it, four chilies in this recipe. Um, I think I may have forgotten to buy a jalapeno. Either that or I can't find it, and it's somewhere in this room. Usually I, I make this for people who can't tolerate um, any semblance of heat. <laughs> so I'm, I'm so used to leaving the jalapeno out that I'm guessing that's what happened. But there should be a jalapeno right about, right about here. So just imagine a jalapeno. And imagine me probably picking it up to smell it and say, Hmm, smells like jalapeno. Yep, yep, yep. So those are our chilies. Um, what's next? Let's go over here. This is the rest of the spices that are going to go in our delicious chili paste. There's oregano, there's cumin seeds, coriander seeds, and black peppercorns. And um, these smell delicious. The um, coriander seeds are like 
kind of herbal and lemony and just really, really wonderful. Black pepper is black pepper. It's nice. Oregano is oregano. Cumin seeds are like that sort of a funky, funky smell you get from, from chili powder. If you can't find these, I bet you can. Um, I got these from Fred Meyer. Actually, no, I didn't. I got some of these from Fred Meyer. I think I may have gotten the coriander seeds from Fred Meyer. They've got them too, but I got them from a little, a little local store that has uh, a great little bulk spice section for good prices, and they are super delicious smelling. Salt, of course. Gotta have salt. Or, you know, your salt substitute of choice. Um, onions. So when I say two onions, they're like this size onions. If you've got big, crazy honking onions, one onion. Some garlic. Cilantro, which I think might actually be these things all grown up. Um, yeah, kind of, kind of a similar herbal, lemony, just fresh scent. Um, this, this is a butternut squash, and this is actually the perfect size. This is a two-pound butternut squash. If you can't find these, they're super popular. Um, so if they don't have these, I think sweet potatoes would probably be your next best substitute. I have not made it with sweet potatoes, but I bet it would be super delicious. The original recipe, I don't remember whether it called for tomatoes or not, but I like tomatoes and chili. I think it has a little bit of acidity and fruitiness that is really nice with the other chilies and it, I don't know, just works. And some wine. This is a not a typical thing to find in chili. I put it in there because you're supposed to use beer but I can't drink beer, <laughs> so I use wine, and it, it works out really, really well. Um, that's a Zinfandel. I think the only real guidelines I can give is when you're cooking with wine, if you're not used to cooking with wine, um, don't go for something sweet. It, 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 it may not turn out very good. Go for something that's on the drier side, and um, usually in this recipe, I like to use either Zinfandel or Pinot Noir or a Tempranillo or something that's not not as kicky in the face as your standard Cabernet. So Pinot Noir, you can probably find that anywhere. I like Zinfandel because I like Zinfandel. It's delicious. Um, and then our big old hunk of beef. This is about three pounds and the recipe only needs two, so I'm probably gonna cut off a little chunk, but if you're um, cooking in a full-sized oven, you can probably just throw three pounds in and it would probably be just fine. Might want to increase your spices just a little bit. So for this recipe, we're going to be using an oven and an oven. So this is a four and a half quart. Um, if you're making a bigger recipe, obviously you're going to want to use a bigger one. If you don't have one or don't want to, or you have a slow cooker or pressure cooker, this recipe can go straight into either of those just fine. The only other sort of specialty thing you'll need is a blender. Uh, you can use a regular blender. This one is kind of a super blender, but um, regular blender will work just fine. Okay, I think I've got this situated right. So, one note before we uh, keep going on this. Back to our chilies. How to get these things prepped. Basically, you just rip the stem off. Chuck it. It's best to do this over a container. <laughs> Maybe not a cutting board, because inside is all the seeds. And the seeds are the spiciness, which is how I can get away with having a uh, how many chilies? Five chilies? <laughs> Three anchos and a chipotle and a jalapeno and a guano. Lots of them. That's how I can get away with this and serving it to people who can't tolerate any sort of heat. We get all these out. 
And if you like heat, you can be a little lazy. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna call that good. I'm just gonna get the, I'm gonna call that good. Cause I like a little heat and I forgot my jalapeno. So that'll work just fine. Then these, careful, careful. Best do these over the trash or bag. Let's see, can you see that? That is all chili residue. It is a little spicy. Wash your hands after you do this stuff. Definitely wash your hands after you do these, after you cut them up. I mean, let's just cut these up right now. I'll show you. You can cut them up, you can tear them up. We're gonna cut them up. We've got a knife right here. It'll handle the job just fine. But definitely, please wash your hands before you go and like put on eye makeup or use the bathroom or sneeze or touch your eyes. It won't kill you, but you'll regret it. I'm gonna go wash my hands right now. All right, we are finally to the uh, actual recipe steps. The very first thing to do is to take all of those chilies that you just cut up and stick them in some boiling water or water that has just recently been boiled. And then go wash your hands again. So immediately, it starts to smell delicious and it starts to look kind of, kind of not, <laughs> but it tastes delicious, I promise. Stains easy too. So this is going to sit for a half an hour and uh, normally I like to do this before I prep, but I wanted to prep because I'm doing a video. So feel free to do this first and then do all your prep. Usually comes out to just a perfect amount of time. So our next step uh, we're going to be making our chili paste. So you're going to... Ooh, hot. Don't use your fingers. Because then you're going to have to wash them again. So... Ooh. You're going to add all of the chilies. Which are... Nice and soft now. <laughs> Don't do that. Wash your hands. Hmm. Still stained. Anyway. So all the chilies and then about half of this to your blender. Don't throw this out though. Save it. This is about half of that big bunch you saw. It was kind of large, so I'm just using about half of it. Um, my blender is a super blender, so I just sort of roughly chopped it. If you've got a regular blender, you might want to chop it a little more fine. But um, I, uh, I've used other blenders and have not had a problem. It's soft. It's just little stemmy things, you know. Then the garlic. Imagine that there's a jalapeno here. And imagine that it looks sort of like that, because I've chopped it up. So what you want to do, if you like it spicy, take a little bite and see how spicy it was. And that was the poblano, so it wasn't spicy at all. Take your imaginary jalapeno, throw it in there. If it was too mild, you can take some of the seeds and chuck them in there too. Or you can do what I saw Volker do, and take the whole chili, 
and just stick it in the pot. That way you can add as much or as little as you like per bowl. I think that's ingenious and I need to remember to buy a jalapeno and try that next time. Let's see. The last thing is your spices. I added a tablespoon of the chipotle chili powder in it and one half of a teaspoon of salt. And that all goes in. And we're going to blend it up. First we're going to try and find some space to put this. Alright, got some chili paste. Looks good. Smells really good. Tastes hot. Tastes good. Not too hot. Just a little hot. Tastes real good. Alright, we're going to start cooking now. I'm going to preheat this on my uh, top to medium. Super. So this is an induction top that I'm cooking on, and it preheats pretty quickly. Uh. See? Already melting. So this is, I'm using um, beef tallow that I um, trim off the big hunks of beef that I get <laughs> uh, because I already paid for it and it tastes good and it, um, yeah. Use what kind you like. I have nothing against beef fat, we eat beef. Um, all the data I've seen says that it's hot dogs that are bad for you, not steak. So I have no problem using this. You can use whatever you like. We're going to be cooking it for a long time, so maybe don't use anything that's like super delicate. Coconut oil is always good. I've used coconut oil. It works just fine. Salt. We're salting beef. It's all good. Yay. Wash your hands. So it's feeling warm. We're gonna see if it's ready. Yep, that's what we want to hear. I told you it's real quick. Woo. <laughs> Don't drop your beef on the floor. I didn't, it's right here. I saved it. These are kind of large chunks. I like them kind of chunky. Um, that was actually how the recipe was written originally, and I started doing it that way, and I found that I really liked it.
Okay, it's looking like we're having some action over here. Let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah, that looks nice. That looks good. That's what we're going for. It's in, I don't know, probably what it's in three. That one probably could have used a little more time, but that's good enough. But I think, I think this combination of cast iron and induction is not creating very many hot spots. Quite nice. I rather like it. beef is looking pretty good, pretty good and brown. Alright, that's all the hard stuff done. Well, we just gotta start adding in basically everything else in, um, in a few more minutes. All I'm doing here is just trying to get up all of the yummy bits from the beef so that they don't burn, so that you get to taste them, because they're delicious. Now these are just gonna, these are just gonna go until they get nice and, uh, nice and softened. I'll be back then. Stir it a couple of times. It should look pretty good. Right, looking good on the onions and the, the poblano. We got some more yummy stuff forming up on the bottom of the pan. Sometimes if you stir these vegetables, because they've got moisture in them, you can just get all that stuff right up. Oh well, completely foggy.
that will definitely help. Oh yeah. save this and I'll show you why in a little bit. I also usually taste my wine before I add it. Ooh! Ooh, that's nice. Ooh, I like that a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the flavor on one. I like Zinfandel because it's it's really easy to cook with because it's got some good flavors in it. It's got a lot of fruity flavors. And I like that. And I like how, how it uh, works with the chilies. It tastes good too. Alright. <laughs> One downside to this blender is it's so deep. I gotta get all of this chili paste out of here. And that is why I saved a little bit of the wine. Ooh. Oh yeah. Because this stuff is super delicious, and you don't want to lose any of it if you can help it. So I got all that back, back down in there. Of a cup of wine, half a cup of wine. Try and loosen some of that up. Ah, much better. And oh boy, it smells really good. It smells really good. I'm going to turn off this pot because it already started bubbling and I don't want it to necessarily spatter. I feel like this would make a mess. so tempted to taste this, but I can't yet. It's got to go in the oven. Right. You're probably going to get all steamed up. Oh yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That is what we are looking for. Meat is nice and tender. It's not the prettiest dish in the world, but it's yummy. 
And honestly, the pumpkin makes it look a lot prettier. All right, back into the oven for another half hour. All right, ready? It looks much prettier with the squash in there. Hmm. Squash is done. Meat's done. Oh yeah. Actually, the squash is quite done. Let's taste a little. Yeah. Mm. Oh boy. Whew, finishing is hard. <laughs> so this is how I like to serve it. I'm kind of just eager to eat it at the point. Some, uh, some Monterey Jack cheese. I may have forgotten to point out the cilantro that we cut up and put in the blender and put in here was only the stem half. And this is the leafy half. And uh, you can Mix it all in there when it's done, if you like a more, less raw texture. I kind of like it this way, so I leave it out and I put it on per serving. And then we got a good avocado with just a little bit of salt on it. So avocados like just a little bit of salt. As you can see, the meat is tender. Should be. It was cooked for two and a half hours. <laughs> it smells really good. Get, get all my spoon meat. There we go. Let's get a little bit of that avocado in there. Yeah. It's not a pretty dish, but it's pretty tasty. Falco proved hot. Oh boy. It was hot, but it was so good. Yep.
All right. Oh. Now, because I didn't put the jalapeno in there, um, this to me is not spicy. This to me is not spicy at all. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit as flavor. Which is, um, if you don't like spicy, I would say about perfect. If you like spicy, feel free to throw in that jalapeno. Um, yep. It's, a. Uh, it's fairly customizable. You can definitely size it up, as I just sized it down, and it worked just fine. I, um... I actually didn't even modify the times. I would say maybe the butternut could have used 20 minutes instead of half hour. Maybe. I think I'll try that next time. Because it's, it's, I don't know, vegetables are weird. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you get one and it'll cook down like really fast. And sometimes you get one that won't. Hmm. I don't know, I promise, but it's so good. Mm. Ooh, let's see. What else do I gotta say? I gotta promote um, J Pico Death and Vault Girl's cooking playlist. Hopefully, that's where you found this. Um, definitely, definitely check out the rest. There are some really, really good videos in there for certain. Some delicious looking food, some delicious tasting food. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. That's my chili recipe. Um, yep, yep, yep. Full recipe will be in the description. Links to the rest of the playlist. What else am I supposed to remember? I don't know. I am too hungry to remember. So anyway, um, thanks VG and JPIC for starting us off on this crazy, delicious playlist. I'm gonna go eat my chili now. <laughs>